Hello there everyone, welcome back to TNO, the last news of Europe. I'm your host, Hamokalovo, and right now we talk about the perfect plan, abolition, would only be the start of addressing the uh, S-word question. Freeing the own dimension will ultimately only exchange one problem for another. We will be rid of countless millions of dudes, but left with an equal number of homeless, landless, and destitute individuals who cannot be granted citizenship under German law. This is the issue that anti dudist radicals always fail to answer adequately. The gang of four, however, worked with a big daddy on this for years and hit upon an ingenious solution. Dubbed the Rückführungsprogramm, the solution is set up in two stages. The first is the abolition of the S-word. This will see all S-words placed under the direct administration of the Big Daddy government and granted special status. They will be confined to special districts and camps, though in far more humane conditions than the old, um, <clears throat> old places where it starts with a K and it has a lot of camps. The second stage, which will be far more difficult, is to repatriate every single former dude to their nation of origin. This is, of course, complicated by the state of post-war Europe. All Russians will be shipped to Muscovy, for example, but the Rockford's program remains the last best hope for millions of the unfortunate. So right now, uh, we're still continuing on, trucking along, getting this one done. We'll jump over here, we'll uh, gradually, of course, reduce taxes, well, or do it immediately, and do it for the worker, and then get a new Deutschland, which would be cool. A great tax reduction. Taxes on virtually everyone except the mega corporations have been far too high for decades. Part of Big Daddy's supposed anti-capitalist agenda in reality. All his tax policies ever achieved was the enrichment of the, the uh, <clears throat> drivers, the S drivers, and the same degenerate bourgeoisie that he once rallied against. Ehad has long been an advocate of lowering taxes, and his logic quite thoroughly trumps any ideological excuse with the NSDAP can come up with. Dropping tax rates will take a lot of pressure off the lower middle classes who represent the bulk of the population, and therefore the bulk of the consumers. Consumers will have more purchasing power is never a bad thing, and giving it to them would make lower taxes self-sustaining. A win-win situation for the Reich and the people, and her people. Cool. And a treatment for the cancer. After a great deal of debate, often fueled by alcohol and conducted in a haze of cigar smoke, the Big Daddy and his cabinet finalized a solution to the long-standing question of, uh, <clears throat> slavery. As anyone knows, the approximately 40 million slaves in the Reich simply cannot be granted manumission in mass and be set free. That would result in a great little more than social and economic chaos across Europe, along with a great deal of bloodshed. The first and most pressing concern, of course, is the nationalization of slavery. As long as slaves remain private property, they remain vulnerable to excessive exploitation and the whims of uncaring industrial corporations. Placing them under the executive stewardships of the right government will ensure that they are well protected and given more humane treatment, an important step in rehabilitating our image as a more benevolent empire. The second step is repatriation. The overwhelming majority of slaves are Slavs, predominantly of Polish and Ukrainian origin, thankfully. We have extensive records of the slave system and can track each and every one of them. Starting shortly after their nationalization, the slaves will begin to be organized and sent back to the countries of origin in a steady stream. Though slow at first, we expect this Rockfordings program to pick up speed as the freed slaves become more cooperative and see that their intentions are true. Will they thank us for this? 40 million? I think that's a little outdated, guys. We're about roughly half that right now, which is actually pretty darn good. Um, there was a comment saying that to really get the full ref full reform fascist spare, when the revolt actually does happen, like for realsies or something like that, um, make sure you accept the first two ones. First two demands, and then get rid of the rest. Oh, look at that! Nice. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think I just go Gang of Four right now. I think we're just gonna go straight Gang of Four as best we can. This one's gonna be difficult to get rid of. The Rhineland IG Farben is gonna be a massive pain in the took us. Oh, wait, we can't do that one. Um, they have no slaves though. We can do that one too. There you go. Nice. We got another one done too. Awesome, awesome. Happy 1968, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. Fear and loathing in L.A. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. It happens every single gosh darn campaign. There you go. It's different, I guess. And long ago, the working classes turned to radicalism uh, to save themselves from the plight. In desperation and bitter rage against those better off than themselves, they were easily taken in by the honeyed lies of Bolshevism and its leftist spawn. Hitler sought to remedy this with his grandiose notions of strength through joy, and the subversion of the labor movement with the German workers' front. Neither worked, and the working classes simmered away in silent resentment for years, deprived of work by slavery, and kept alive with only token welfare from the state. Well, that's not good. Bread and circuses. The solution to this long-standing issue is obvious. Give them what they darn well need. Workers want to work. They want to make an honest living and support themselves, the same as any businessman or career bureaucrat. The NSDAP, despite its supposedly populist roots, never trusted the workers or cared about their welfare. Ironically, it took a decidedly bourgeois fear and its clique of elites to turn the situation around for them. Class collaboration, a forgotten cornerstone of National Socialism, has arguably saved the day. Now, I do wonder, do you get any free PP here? Uh, the research cell will be active for 100 days, after which it will be removed. Oh, that sucks. Uh, what is that about this all stuff? Okay, that's interesting. Um, anything else here? Not really. Yeah, we need some emergency PP right now. 
I mean, that'd be good to do. Performance cause, opening the doors. Um, yeah, that one you actually lose PP, which is not good. Opening the doors up to diplomacy. Uh, I guess stability. You get more PP too, but obviously we don't want we don't want to go that way. Uh, yeah, we lose a lot of PP. We still need to keep doing the reformist stuff. So, oh, hmm, land of the rising sun. Yeah, we don't get a lot much PP. So, hmm. Maybe we won't be doing propaganda for a little bit. We still get, actually, not that much every single day. That's actually really bad. Ooh, I should have not spent the PP getting rid of those slaves. My bad. Um, honestly, then? Hmm. Oh, we're doing this one, too, which would be very good for extra PP. So give us about a week or so. Give us a few days, and we won't be doing this. But we're already... Regime alignment has a current... Has currently conservative tick and a reformist pivot. So give us a few days, and we'll get back there. Your days are numbered. The conference room was thick with cigar smoke. Obbs, von Siemens, Geilenberg, and Flick sat around the great oaken table, idly tapping ash into the provided trays and sipping their drinks of choice. Spears late drawled Obbs, uh, extinguishing the nub of a cigar and producing another from a gold plate case. Look at this, pretty nice. Some fear he is, muttered Flick, as he finishes grin and tonic, or gin and tonic. Can't even keep an appointment, and he thinks he can run the economy however he likes. The room lit up with coarse laughter. Makes, makes you long for the days of Hitler. Take, talk your leg off, but at least you get what you want from him in the end. <clears throat> You suppose he's serious about cutting our supply? asked Gallenberg. Surely he'd just be shooting himself in the foot. How does he expect the right to survive without us? It's disgraceful that he even made the suggestion, Obs quipped. Disgraceful. Disgraceful that he just piss on National Socialism. Like that, on everything that made Germany great. I'm sure the people would love to hear all about that, don't you think? The click of Jack Boots on marble entered uh, earshot, drawn closer by the second. Nobody moved. The double door swung open as a pair of sharply dressed Wehrmacht gods stepped in, saluting the guests and stepped aside. Behind them marched the Fuhrer. By his side was Ludwig Erhard, the hated meddler. They drew to a halt before the conference table, surveying the room with cold eyes. Nobody rose to salute or greet them. Men who understood each other needed no words. Citizens, said Speer, voice clear with a rehearsed edge to it. Henceforth, by Fuhrer directive, all involuntary laborers in the Greater German Reich are nationalized. All individual laborers, organized groups, and privately held camps are to be considered state property. You will not be compensated, that is all. The room sat silent for a moment before Obbs dropped a cigar and rose to seat. Spialis is. But he was gone. The guards slamming the doors behind him. One image would remain with Obbs for weeks to come, however, that of Ludwig Erhardt smoking as a destruction of his corporation was assured. This means war. Cool, and we're not going to uh, do it. focus yet. Because, there we go. We need to give about yeah, another day, maybe. There we go. Should have enough now. And one more day. Real Z's, there you go. Hey, cruiser, cruiser holes, nice. Go, there we go. That's how we, how we do it. A new Germany. Germany has ascended from a dysfunctional mess to a true economic powerhouse once more. What was once thought impossible has come to fruition. Foreign economists and hawks, once proclaiming our intimate downfall, are now silent. Radicals within Germany are increasingly losing their grip on the dissolution and downtrodden as a state makes moves to better the lives of its citizens without the need for the looting and pillaging that marked our initial rise of power. We have a mountain of issues unresolved. There are still tens of millions of slaves within the Reich, desperate for freedom and to return home. Our new order in Europe is challenged from all sides, from within and from the Fuhrer himself at times. Yet still we are rising from the muck. We no longer dangle over an abyss by our fingertips, but have crawled up from the cliff side to higher, higher ground. The Reich has a long way climbed before... To climb before it can truly be called great once again, but we can finally breathe easy. Ish. I would definitely say ish. Alright, 68. Let's come over here. Get some better guns. How's this looking? 18. Oh, went down. I thought it used to be 20%. That's a lot of deficit, though. Holy crap. Now, according to a lot of you guys, the next one. So we finished history. And we're done with this for now. Except for this part here, of course. Um, so let's do this one. Social state. Low pensions, accessible pensions, universal health care. Generous unemployment subsidies. <clears throat> Lose a lot of political power. Or this one, at least 50%. Limited. Um. Honestly, this one looks probably more better for us to do. Um. This one really hurts us. Universal health care. Daily political power goes up slightly. You lose 100 PP. The social market. Poverty gets better. You at least. I'm not really sure. You lose less political power here. Honestly, I'd rather do this one. Um, you don't get unemployment subsidies. But it seems like this would be more for a full reformist, though. Oh, can we really afford this? I might have to go back and go to the other one. So if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. But this seems like more of a conservative one, maybe. Uh, conservative welfare state. So, social state. I was never enamored by the welfare state established by Bismarck. 
Uh, it was certainly helped keep socialism at bay, but the sheer amount of money and red tape involved made it all hack to keep running. Oh, maybe not. Maybe as a... However, try as I might, I can't convince the others of their social state, as they're calling it now. It's a suboptimal route for us to take. I must admit that the whole idea encompasses more than just economics. Vital as those are, so I'm willing to get some ground here. If Shapiro is willing to support it, then I won't fight them on it. They want to deal with the ramifications of 20, years, 20 or 30 years, that's fine by me. I'll direct the Reichwehrschaft's ministerium to begin funding the social state drawn up by Kiesinger. No doubt many of them need, will need revising by a learned economist. I just hope that Shapiro knows what he's doing by proving this. Or actually, maybe that's a conservative one. Maybe this is a more one. Germany's always experimented with social policies, but some were much more successful than others. I can't radically advocate for a welfare state anymore, no matter how much my companions insist on doing so. I hate to disappoint them, especially with the proven benefits of a social state in mind, but I don't believe such a system is viable in the long term. We should instead pursue the social market, a system where the workers are protected not by an overbearing welfare state, but by moderate government regulations, social security by, via ease to access of access to work, and the humanely run nature of the economy, when operating correctly, which it shall be under oversight. This will keep both workers and employers happy, ensuring social harmony and minimizing class conflict. That didn't help me at all. Honestly, so this one requires regime stability. This one doesn't. Um, this seems better if you want more reforms like we, that we want to do. But this one, it helps you with poverty as well. And you need the requirement of more social regime stability. So I want to do this one just because it requires regime stability. And I've already fought tooth and nail to get that one. So if you get more regime stability because it's 100% right now. So, I guess we'll go with that one. I guess either one would probably have been pretty good, but honestly, do we really need to take that one right now? We don't even need to take it right now, so we're not going to take it. Cool, how about this one? So, okay, good, good, good. Um, the Reich's needs. Oh, you choose either one. Oh, okay, so this is kind of the cons eh, it's kind of conservative, not really. The Guiding Hand. Invest in each all Eastern regimes, firm chain. So, we'll probably do this one too, since it's both needs regime stability. Um... GDP growth, conservative, yeah. So the, I'm going to say the inner ones kind of benefit more, but it's nearly impossible to tell. And you do get some more poverty increase, which is, or lower poverty, but solve the Wehrmacht problem. Even now, after years after taking power with Hitler's own blessing, the Wehrmacht doesn't trust us. Schoenow's clique retains a strong presence in the officer corps, allowing the treacherous presence, uh, or treacherous snake to monitor going on with the OKW from his exile in Muscovine. Bowmanets run the Kriegsmarine, pretending not to hear orders from Germania. The Luftwaffe, arrogant as ever, still acts as though they are beholden to Goring alone. It's time to grit her teeth and pull this knife from her backs before it sinks any deeper. The traitors in the waiting must be shackled and their plans squashed. OKW and Von Trusko have a variety of ideas for how to reform the various branches of the Wehrmacht, but the Führer may have plans of his own in his regard. Alright, so we're still 10 there, that's good. Anything here? No, we're still pretty good. Thank God we're on the regime stability for now. Oh, baby. Ah, uh, synthetic oil, yes, that is totally fine with us. Down here, uh, we're gonna wait for that one. Really not bad. And we got about a week left for that, so that's not too bad either. Nice. Hey, one burst set. Nice. That's a massive deficit. Oof. And how is... Uh, actually, we could do anything here yet. Eh, probably not. Nice. How's this looking down here? Poverty is looking not too bad. We'll definitely increase the... Or decrease the level of poverty within our country, but... Obviously, it's going to take some time. Anything there? Come up here. Alright. Nothing down there. And... Yes. There you go. Yeah, we can do this stuff. We get more weekly stability, but we're already at 100%, so... So, this one gives you a new model army. Wehrmacht reform outlook indecisive, which grants home. Huh? We have a very, very Wehrmacht. That's not really that bad. That's really not bad, at actually. Those debuffs could be better, but still. Um, research speed. Counter research speed. We could try something else here, maybe. What's the name of Spahedler? Keen eyes from R&D have spotted something strange in Madison Square Park in New York City. Many people pass through there every day, but there's a particular group of people that stand out, feuding an advertisement agency. We picked up on the fact that their mannerisms and way of speaking seems awfully Burgundian. The R&D will investigate these men and figure out if they're truly agents of Himmler. Nice. And we'll do both, why not, because we can. And anything else? No, 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 no. And here we are. Uh, two to four. One to two, two to four. Oh, I don't want to lose command power. Let's do this one first. Cool. So, I'm not sure which way we should go first. Look seaward. Behold the legions. Begin downsizing the Wehrmacht. The new division limit will be 100. The general staff recommends to prepare for the eventual limitation of the Wehrmacht to 50. That's not good. Um, for this one, this arm nation. Is that, is that gonna do? <laughs> Eyes on the horizon, old glory. Ooh, I like that one. Oh, I don't want to lose PP. I don't want to lose PP, man. Minus 0.2. God dang it. 
Um, the Eagle Tame, Knights of the Sky. I like that one. This gives you so much more political power. Weekly manpower. Wow. Um, fleet of the hegemony. Um, global responsibility is not bad. It's not bad. The new Hoxie Flota. Uh, you get more daily. And you have XP gain. Not very much, but still not bad. Germania rules the waves. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Let's grab that. All right, so we're for. Well, if we gotta spend some command power, so be it. We still have thirty, which is not too bad. Thank you. Is there anything else we can do here at all? No, that's fine with us. All right, well. All right. Anything else? Oh yeah, this one too down here needs to uh, kind of go by. Goodbye. That's looking really not too bad. We definitely need to get. Oh well. Uh, get rid of these two. There's a very few slaves here, so there you go. Do that once. And now there should be very, very few slaves over there, which is good, good, good. We spent a command power. I guess behold the uh, legions. It was a hail that carried us to the final victory of the Allies and the Bolsheviks, while the Luftwaffe and Kriegsmarine were keeping their hands clean. The Panzer Corps, artillery, and poor, bloody infantry fought and died in the tens of thousands. Our victory was at one atop a mountain of corpses, rising from a sea of blood both our own and our enemies. Were still, they were used by Hitler and his cronies to commit countless atrocities that will forever stand the honor of the great nation. Small wonder, then, they have grown so inured to war's toil, toil or toll, such as that even yearn for it once more under the guidance of bloody Ferdinand and his circle of evil. Valiant as they might have once been, they now exist as little more than puppets of the militaries and the NSDAP. The hail must be better than it, than this. It must be more than a band of butchers in uniform. With the few are convinced to take a hands-off approach and the final decisions left up to the OKW, greatness for the army is in reach once more. At least it will be. Anything here? Yes. All right. So how are we building? Not very much. The new model army. To the people who had just been looking at the victory parade after the end of the last war, it must have seemed ludicrous to even think that the German military supremacy over the entire world could ever falter, even in a thousand years. Sadly, as most things human, as most things are human, all it took was a couple decades. Without the threat of a powerful enemy, corruption and infighting began tearing the Wehrmacht apart in what historians would probably call a twisted parody of the late Roman Empire. Like the Roman generals that were so they were so fond of, the highest German officers bought the loyalty of their men by promising hefty bonuses at the end of their service, siphoning the needed funds from the Reich's budget, with a subtle threat of open revolt should anyone refuse them. As such a result, the Wehrmacht bloated horrendously, eating more and more of the public expenses and contributing to the final collapse of the German economy. The increase in dimensions, however, didn't result in a better military, or on the contrary, Overloaded logistics, unfit recruits, outdated equipment, and fighting, infighting between officers turned what was once a jewel of efficiency into a wheezing sick patient as the Second Russian War showed perfectly. Now with the Civil War over, Von Trusko's plans for a large reform of the German armed forces returned them to the former glory. The program will concern all of the Wehrmacht, from the Heyhoff to the Luftwaffe to the Kriegsmarine. Everything will be turned upside down until it fits his ideals once again. However, this won't be an easy task. Many officers of the old guard are still in active service and will try to resist the reform at all costs, especially if they are supported by the conservative elements of the NSDAP. It seems that this battle will be far more political than expected. Onwards to victory, though. Onwards, onwards, onwards. Seven's not bad. Um... I think we have to have to do this one, so that's fine. Do that one. Reform the hair. I do not want to lose political power. I no. I don't mind army professionals are increasing, but still, plus 0.25. All you do, if we rush through this, it'd be okay. Precious glory, Heil whom? Do you lose even more political power there? Why? You lose even more political power. Arr, why does that all cost political power? I'd rather do this side then. Reform the hair. Contrary to what the Ministry of Propaganda is, obliged to claim, the hail is not what it used to be. Cronyism and stagnation have worn away its best qualities, and while the common soldiery are dangerously out of practice, even our R&D has fallen behind that of our competitors, as recent experiences in South Africa have shown. It's time to enact a general refurbishment of the hail's inner workings. While we have no desire for conflict, Germany must be able to defend itself, and a key part of that is keeping up with its advances made by our rivals, or ideally, surpassing our rivals. And we're at 9, that's not too bad. Uh, we'll see about that, though, in a little bit. Anything here? You can bribe them if you really want to. If we have to, how many divisions do we have actually? Um. Oh, the dam's finished. Nice. Good job, guys. Oh, uh, 702 bit out. Oh, it's only 61 divisions. Wait, why do we have only 61? I thought we had way more than that. So 61 is not bad. We we're spending a lot of money on them, though. That's still a lot of money. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hmm. 
back to square one, to say that the Hayas in a sorry state would be an understatement. And Von Jusko doesn't like to sugarcoat things. The truth is that what was once the pride of the Reich is now little more than a rotting carcass, bloated by the corrupt mismanagement of the previous high command and filled it with unfit recruits who are only too grateful to be able to es escape economic depression and finally eat a warm meal every day. This exponential growth, however, overloaded the supply system until it finally broke and only served to enrich the weapons industry in cahoots with the military leadership. With the constant downturn of the German economy, more and more money was diverted towards maintaining this living corpse. The mere thought of cutting military spending was met with the subtle threats of civil war, with the result uh, that any kind of research or improvement was halted due to a lack of funds. Poorly trained soldiers, outdated panzers, malfunctioning aircraft, and old doctrines were the reasons for the collapse of the German defenses during the West Russian War. But not even this was enough to let the corrupt high command understand the depth of their mistakes, and the hair continued its decadence. But with the Civil War over, uh, the Hea has been left reeling from its losses and the difficulty of serving once more alongside those who mere months ago were remaining a machine gun aimed at you. This, however, is also a perfect time for reform. Von Chesko has a clear idea of what he wants the German army to become, and he won't stop until it's become a reality. This, however, might be difficult, as several prominent generals and field marshals, chief among them Ferdinand Schona, will try to stop him at any cost. The battle for Germany is not yet over. It seems like it's never over. There's so many problems here that, uh, it's never over. War has changed. Um, elevate the good man? Yeah, why not? Following the Burger Creek, the majority of the Hea divisions who had fought for our enemies were granted amnesty and reintegrated. Han Hersper was right to do this. After all, we are not murderous Bolsheviks. But it came at a price. An army's image is best represented by its leadership, and many reactionary military officers have retained their ranks. Whether they're committed foes of a regime or miss simply misguided, this will not do. Our most, the most troublesome officers must be reassigned or retired. Their place shall be taken by a newly promoted man of sound character, dedicated to the nation and its people rather than the ideology of its leader. Fresh blood? Very cool. Uh, one more here. Um, do we really need to take this one? How much stability do we have? We're 100%, so we don't need to take it. Nice. Hey, we won this one. Nice, they're 12. 1 and 1, now it's going to be 2 to 1. Very good. Uh, let's see. Um, supply consumption goes up. Training time goes up. New division will be 65 divisions, which is not too bad. The bulk of our forces during the Belgian Krieg were comprised of ad hoc militia. Students, freed slaves, and ordinary citizens did a good deal of killing and most of the dying. Those who survived simply returned to their old lives, but some found their calling in our service and have been remained loyal, becoming a sort of informal reserve force. Time to sound the call of war once again that those brave souls might heed its call for now or new here. We will need strong, experienced men proven in battle. German spirit shall become shall come to be displayed in bravery and discipline once again, rather than ruthlessness and insensitive bloodlust. Span cut. 55 words! Oh, it's a good thing I'm not really concerned myself with it right now. Hey, 8 to 6, that's not too bad. Anything for 2? 2 to 4? No, 1 to 3 is not bad. 1 to 3, 2 to 4. These all suck. Uh, I'm gonna wait. I wanna, I wanna see what they do. Oh, disappear reactionaries? Yeah, we have to keep doing that one. It only hurts our regime stability and costs us money and expertise, so I... I really don't mind that one. Um, regime stability? I guess we could do it again. There you go. Works for me. Hopefully it works for you guys too. Cool. And fresh blood for the entire Bemach. But the hair more than all others. The Burger Krieg was a Sith wielding wielded by death itself, decimating simple soldiers and officers alike as the fighting degenerated into house to house combat, where the entirety of Germany was front line, and the command tent was a place like any other to fight and die. The following period wasn't any kind to the Oba Commando de Hair, as many disloyal, corrupt, or incapable officers were systematically purged, leaving a large hole in the officer corps. However, from problems came opportunities, and Francesco knew this very well. The Prussian general spent the years of reconstruction not only reforming the army doctrines and structural organization, but also training the new generation of officers to ensure that they wouldn't follow in the predecessor's footsteps. One of his greatest achievements was the establishment of the Officier Schule des Heers in Dresden. Stopped by the best remaining military theorists, the new institution was made so the cadets from the entire Reich could learn from these new doctrines of war in a suitable environment. Of course, that environment would be filled with references to Prussian discipline and the reformist ideas. Despite the ideological issues, however, no one can deny that the officer Schule has done an excellent work. In the end of the first training cycle, and the subsequent ceremony in which the young cadets took their rank as full-fledged officers of the Heer, marks a new beginning for the armed forces of the Reich. We can only pray that these new generals and lieutenants will prove worthier than their predecessors, and able to keep the Wehrmacht from descending once more into decadence. Salute the new officers. What else do we have here? So we're getting really close to dismantling rocks back out. Um, oh, look at that, yes. Would you look at that too? Ah, Daimler Benz is almost done. Yeah, look at that. Tw 21 million? That's not bad. Aji Favin needs to die though. They just need to die. Um, I'm going to do this one too. Now there's like one... Um, do that one too. It's fine. The less slaves, the more impactful that'll be. Five million is way too many for me to do. I can do one here. That's fine. Because the Rhineland has way too many slaves. Oh my 
gosh. And don't get me wrong, we love slaves sometimes, but sometimes not so much. But war has changed. As the early as early as the West Russian War, it was apparent that the Hale's doctrines were woefully outdated. We've grown complacent sitting in our laurels while the Bolsheviks learned their experiences. If not for General Spato's genius, they might have successfully outmaneuvered and defeated us. To prevent another near disaster, we must be willing to learn even from our enemies. The Russian concept of deep battle is some very interesting aspects, even if the OKW is dismissive of its innately Russian character. The Americans have also made great strides in recent years and gave our men a hard time in South Africa. We should assess our performance in that war and see what there is to learn from it. It's always, always, always good to learn from your uh, enemies. And friends, but especially your enemies, especially if you're losing. More practical options. As an unfortunate consequence of Hitler's rules, his personal preferences informed a great deal of our military R&D. In the late Führer's mind, bigger was always better. Look no further than the embarrassing oversized mouse, for example. Much like Deutsch Physik, the Hell's old R&D R &D guidelines solely belong in the dustbin of history. We've nothing to gain from the constantly upscaling our equipment besides mildly amusing photographs that someone will see in a history book and laugh at someday. Anyone who still advocates for such developments will be shown the door and their job offered to somebody with their head screwed on properly. Unternehmen spahed the report. Top secret. Unternehmen Spahedler, Odenstadt Bogen, Rogsche occupying French territory, US of A, leader of the organization of OFM, or the leader of the OFM. Records have been traced from employees working at the advertisement agency Madison Square Park. Operation has been confirmed as a setup. Agents currently numbering six have all direct ties to the shoot stop while operating out of Odenstadt Bogen, presumed to be veteran agents from before the Civil War. Information on source of income is weak, primarily the US financial sector and by far secondarily redirect funding from Hitler's clique. Recommended actions for the pursuit of ties to the U.S. financial sector. More specific information on where the agents get their funding will be found in page seven, page four to seven. Uh, agent profiles will be found in page one to six. See appendix A about personal loyalties regarding Oldenstadt Bogen. Let Germany be in safe hands. Himmler and his goons are at it again, but we did get some PP out of that, which is nice. Oh crap! Are you kidding me? Ah, oh, this is not good. Hmm. We'll try it. We're gonna lose if we don't win it here anyway. So, hopefully, we can win the last one. Because we've won pretty much every single one of them so far, but soldiers, not machines. The duty of the German soldier to protect his nation, his honor, his people. To the Nazi, that means setting aside the humanity and silencing his conscience. In this ethos, preached ceaselessly by Shona and his bloody-minded followers, the human heart is obsolete. They know only cold mechanical hate. But soldiers remain humans like any other. They must establish a synthesis between restraint and freedom, between voluntary subordination and conscious, conscientious leadership, between pride in oneself and consideration for others, between rigor and compassion. Unless a balance is kept between these qualities, a soldiery spirit is in danger of Degenerating into soulless routine and narrow minded dogmatism. Let's get that political power. Final division level will be 50. Jesus Christ. Cross your heart, do not salute. Kurt Georg Kiesinger managed to find Albert Speer just at the right mood, it seemed. Almost pliable, he was hoping. Nonetheless, he entered the Fuhrer's office and met him with man what met with man eye to eye. Raising an eyebrow, Speer began speaking. How Kiesinger, he asked. Mein Führer, Kissinger began, there's something that needs to be tended to. It's an issue we've left unsolved for far too long, and I believe that today is a day we can decide on what to do with it. Speer tensed up, if only slightly. What is the man planning? Go on, Herr Kissinger. What is this issue that you want to solve? He nodded politely. It's a matter of your religious policy. Speer felt the fingers on his pen press a little harder. Yes, what of it, mein Führer? As it stands right now, the Reich maintains Hitler's anti-religious laws, but over the past few decades, the demographics of what our people believe in has not shifted too drastically. A significant portion are still practicing Protestants and Catholics, and... Are you, Herr Kissinger? Speer started asking me to reverse this change. Do you not remember what our previous Führer's wishes were? Kissinger simply nodded again, which irritated Speer even more. Of course, I know, mein Führer, but you also realize that you have promised us reform. We've been the backbone of your operations quite some time now, and nobody would find it satisfactory if. This again, Speer nearly hissed. I'm being strong armed into accepting your darn proposal. And if I refuse? Kissinger now shook his head. I don't know exactly what will happen if you did, mein Führer, but. You only have to gain by following through with this policy. You'll bring stability into the Reich, and those who are oppressed will be happier to serve. Not only that, it'll weaken the grip that the hardliners wish to hold against us. Speer glared at him for a while. He was making good points, that was true, but, he, but was he going to, uh, going to go back on his word? The consequences if he did so. And after a while of unpleasant silence, Speer's gaze lowered back down to the papers in front of him. Herr Kissinger, I don't want to say this, but fine, take your victory and leave. I doubt this to be a good idea. Of modest resolve. Kissinger seemed to take much more positive appearance than he, when he heard Speer's acceptance. I'm glad you decided to make this choice so swiftly, mein Führer, he said. And the man looked up at Kissinger with a mixture of impatience and boredom, less so gratitude and accepting of the flattery. Whatever troubles you befall your office, I am certain I can solve. Speer leaned forward on his desk and put his hands together. Herr yeah, Kissinger, be well aware of much of the party will not be happy about this. This, the much unnecessary pressure will be far from helpful during this time. I hope you can keep them at bay. Kissinger nodded politely. 
Will that all be you require of me, my Fuhrer? He asked, and Speer looked to be actually thinking about the prospect for a few seconds, before merely shaking his head and speaking. No, Herr Kissinger, you are dismissed. With, when the deputy Fuhrer left the room, he it entered into a stale, unpleasant silence. There will be many names off the top of his head that he could name who would not be appreciating this move. He merely crossed his fingers and there wouldn't be too many wanting to voice their opinions. Not deputy Fuhrer for no reason. Not so fast. Secularism, huh? The morning was tiring. Having agreed to Kissinger's request, Speer had to deal with this endless paperwork that would haunt him for months. It had it only been that, then his only concern would be the frustration of having to give up yet another one of his ambitions. But, in a twist of fate that only served to make him even further annoyed, he received letter after letter of high-ranking officials in the government, demanding that this be reversed. Though one is specific to stood out, a letter with particularly prestigious seal. My fear, I have heard about the deeply concerning change of pace within the upper echelons of the Voxala. Is this true? Are we stepping away from the building blocks that our previous Führer, Adolf Hitler, set for us? I, along with my allies and friends within the circle of Reich, find ourselves worrying about the integrity of the national social values which will be threatened. Did we not talk about the futility of religion, its needless superstition, and an insatiable desire to twist the present back towards the present or the past? Not only that, but it is directly linked to the Jew. I will not speak of the attempts to synthesize our ideology and Christianity together, for it is an abomination, but rather I will speak of what secularization will lead to. We have thankfully annihilated Judaism from Europe, but unfortunately the clause of Abraham still follow us. I know that you, my fear, have no love for Christ and his Jewry, and I so ask you to help me, or please reconsider what has been done. If we truly let our right slip into tolerating the Protestant and the Christian, then we will once again follow ourselves to be tainted by religious ideology contrary to national socialism, contrary to the thousand-year right that we are to build, and contrary to our supremacy as an Aryan people. It is my hope that when you receive this letter, you will quickly realize what decision to make. The future of Deutschland is in your hands, my fear, and I trust that you will make the right choice. Reichs stop Hitler, Otto Geisler of Vaterland. By the end of it, Spiel was gritting his teeth, wondering what the heck was to do. I must reverse my decision. A choice cannot be made uh, now. I need time to think. Like any other time. It was only a day later in the afternoon when Speer heard those familiar footsteps outside his door. Putting his papers away, he knew that the man who was about to come in would force Speer to pay full attention to him, in no small part due to his nature, with a small cough and clearing of his throat. The fuel rusted his face. Uh, and, and put his hands together in waiting. With a sharp but careful swing of the door, Chesko stepped in, closing it behind him as he gave a crisp salute. Herr, Herr Speer, he began, almost as, as if he was a fear. I have heard of the situation developing. Really, Herr Chesko, Speer asked, raising an eyebrow at the Prussian. As you know, Herr Speer, he began, body language loosening just slightly. I am a man who sees clearly into the past, and all of the good that has served us. Though I strive for what unified our nation, Prussian discipline, metal, and spirit, there's another element limiting Germany from its reaching its full potential. Speer set a hand up to the side of his face. Go on, Herr Chesko, he weakly encouraged. He nodded dutifully. The essence of God has been restricted, Herr Speer, the military man sighed. In my home, own homeland, I see Protestants thrown out of churches for doing only the duty. Elsewhere, Catholics are harassed and their servants are broken up by the police. Chesko stated, his eyes narrowing just a bit. He could recognize that Speer was giving him. You may not care much about it, but many Germany citizens do. The direction you're taking it shall be antithetical to their beliefs. If you want to avoid decades of strife, then I suggest pressing through with what allowing people to worship openly. Speer glanced at him inquisitively. He offered no sympathy to religion and would be happy to see it gone, but was it really worth breaking down? The choice then was between upholding the future of Germany free of religion, or guaranteeing stability by allowing them to practice their faith. Alright, Hetrusko, I won't bother with this f further. I won't. I hope I don't regret this. The past is just a stepping stone to the future. This includes religion. It is outdated. The Demon walks free. Yosef, as always, felt uncomfortable when he swung that board around his back and front. I felt like he was pitting himself up as a target for the police, and truth be told, the close encounters he had with them told him that the Protestant was lucky to be there not in jail yet. Exiting into the streets, the nicely painted black letters against the white said, Germany without faith, Germany without its soul. He could see in the far distance the ominous and foreboding bulk salad staring down at him as he gathered with his friends. An hour and a half later, Yosef rallied at the front, next to another ally of his who waved a flag around that spoke of a similar message. She was bolder, older than him, a veteran of these things, and he could always learn something new from her. But when they turned the street corner and met upon a patrol of military police, both parties stood dead in their tracks. Here in the Wehrhauptstadt Germania was a pro small protest of ten marching around wanting their freedom to ring true, and nobody was quite sure what to do. That was until one of the policemen started cracking up. Nudging a fellow officer of his, they took a few minutes to find a megaphone, and then with a click, they spoke. The police is here to remind you that all Führerspeer has been secularizing the anti-religious policies that have been currently instated. The tensions between the two groups loosened significantly after that. However, that still doesn't mean you can walk around and disrupt citizens, go home and wait until you want to be punished. The casual tone of his voice slightly unnerved Yosef, and he swallowed. There wasn't even an that is all, instead only the cutting off of static as a policeman moved on. Was that really what they was that they really said true? Perhaps I don't have to wear this again. 
A focus, a choice of focus. With the research departments working at peak efficiency, the Hea will slowly but surely fill the technological gaps separating it from the other world powers. However, we can't make more than a decade of de decadence and underdevelopment simply disappear overnight, and it'll take some time before we can be on par with the rest of the world. To this end, the Oba Commandos devise a plan to focus our research efforts on a single aspect of war, in order to quickly catch up at least in one field and present ourselves a bit better. On the one hand, we could go the safe route and focus on infantry weapons. Better rifles and grenades will have an impact throughout the entire Hea, no matter the unit or doctrine. Another choice is artillery. Gone are the times of giant railway guns now self-propelled weapons and light infantry portable mortars are the way forward, improving mobility and efficiency of the support units. Some wish to improve the support echelons of the Hale with better logistics, modern engineers and advanced medical detachments to fully aid our troops in the task. Finally, we can focus more on the weapons that brought us to victory. Panzers are still a fundamental part of any army, and with enough investment they can make our enemies tremble once again. Our research teams are ready and await orders. What should they focus on? I'm bonus 95%, 95%. Well, 95%. Um, honestly, we're always doing gun stuff. That's pretty nice. Support equipment's okay. I love artillery, though. Uncle Artie. I like Artie. Cool. All right, everyone. So we lost this round for the game for what is this? Which one is this one? Is this Serbia? I think it's Serbia, right? Um, that's not good. We're two. Well, I guess technically it'd be two two. So hopefully we win the last one, like I said earlier. Other than that, I do and do like Untenem and Axim. The OFN, as they call themselves, have long been a thorn in the side of the Reich. After all, it is a very organization that Judeo Bolshevism runs rampant and free. In order to prevent the growth of America's power, we will work to sabotage relations. I think I read this one before. Yeah, I think I read this one. So if you want to read that one again, please go right ahead. Um, yeah, let's try it. I want to name it Erickson. I'm pretty sure I did that one before. So, let's come back down and keep going with this stuff. Um, okay. Oh, we, we can only do one branch at a time. Okay. Prussia's glory. The redemption of the Hea begins with its roots. Once long ago, German martial pride was something to be admired. We are the envy of all nations, not for our many victories, but for the ethos that guided us. Discipline, loyalty, honor, dedication, patriotism. These elements combine with that inalienable German spirit to create the greatest European military since the days of Rome and her legions. However, under Nazi auspices, the Hea was transformed into a brown band subject to party doctrine and the whims of the late Führer. The Nazification of the Hea was not a rise, but a fall, and to save Germany. That shame must be undone. We will find the means not to mind Kampf, but in the legacy of the soldier king and the nation he built. Actually, let's come back over here. Um, because I didn't really recognize this. Modernizing the Hea sucks. Uh, Vestias Wunder. Which is not great, but whatever. Another Chastelity. Indecisive. Has mixed results. Uh, where's the cap on our guys? Oh, we slashed these guys, yeah. Nice. Actually helped us out. Siemens. Uh, Leader of the Zolverine. Oh, what does that do? Oh, that's not too bad. Gang of four, of course. Um, we need it up to 50 divisions, right? That's what it said, right? Uh, oh, because this one is... Something. Light. Light outlook. That's interesting. Um, right kind of politics, huh? Oh, this is where the people will do it anyways. The issue with politi politicization is that it corrupts a soldier's pure honest duty, that being to fight for his nation, family, and home. Nazism went even further than most ideologies, however. It normalized brutality, turned patriotism to blind obedience, and caused righteous anger to degenerate into ideological hatred. This is actively harmful to the well-being of soldiers, especially once they return to the civilian life, and find a world completely fallen or alien to them. Some level of politicization is inevitable, but it shouldn't be like this. When he is enlisted, a man's political thought should be about how best he can serve his country. Bringing ideology into the mix causes him to filter everything through the lens of what is most politically acceptable, rather than what he should do. The education of soldiers should be turned into a more normal traditional direction. We must ensure that they are loyal to the nation, not to a party's ideology. Good. And anything else? We could bribe political enemies. How much stability do we have? That's looking good. 100%, so I'm not even worried about it. Cool. Our GDP is looking not too bad, too. Awesome, awesome. And we don't have enough command power for this yet. What was it going to do? I forget. Was it over here? No. 58. Jesus Christ. That's so bad. Form anti partisan units, huh? The right kind of politics, my friends. Oh, yeah, I remember. It's, it's a campaign thing. Yeah, my bad. Max that sucker out. Conservative victory in Canada? Well, it's very nice for you guys. Um, We could do this again, but I don't think we really need to, so. Alright. Uh, moral fel jadame. Why not? Controversial the best of times. Nobody likes modern fel jadame. Marie, or something. I always pr mispronounce that. No, military police are an absolute essential part of the modern army. They make control of occupied territory and also ensure that soldiers follow both civilian and military laws. Unfortunately, the House Watchmen have developed a reputation for poor conduct, to put it lightly. When ordered to make, take no half measures when dealing with unruly civilians, massacres by overstressed or heavily notified jadames are all too common in the East. 
Shoot on maze. Yeah. We have to put a stop to the atrocities committed by those who claim to uphold the law. They fear to put an end to the Gestapo, but we needn't go that far. Gendarmes, who have records of criminality, will be prosecuted if possible, while those who are otherwise unfit for service will be given early retirements in their stead. We shall raise a new, more ethical, failed gendarmerie, one that does its job and does it well without any bloodshed or brutality or bloodshed. Wehrmacht over the division limit. The number of divisions in the Wehrmacht is fielding is exceeded the total amount dictated by the new limitations. The current number allowed is 50, while fielding 61, so we gotta get rid of 11. Um, I don't want to get rid of everyone here. I can just get rid of this army, but I don't want to do that. Um, Marines? How big are the Marines? There's only 12 combat. That's that's too much for me to probably mess around with. Because with these guys, uh, they're 18. They're not, still not that great. How many trucks do we have? Four. Oh, we have SS divisions? Um, there's 16 combat. With. You guys are, what, 18. Um, yeah, police? Yeah. So, now we need to get rid of seven. I think that's okay. Seven, 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 seven. Oh, uh, you guys, seven... So you get rid of six. Six more. Oh, you guys are still here? Oh, there you guys. Six, 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 six. You're all the same. Um, I won't keep the helicopters. I think it's good to keep some of these guys here. You six. That's actually not too bad. I prefer you guys. Six. Five more we need to get rid of. And three more. Two more. Everyone's gonna lose them. One more. There you go. So that should equal up how many divisions? Oh, I'll get rid of one too many. Oh, it's alright, whatever. That should actually save us on the budget too, so. Right? Instead of 25 million, it's now 25 million. Huh. I think it's just mostly from oh the massive nuclear stockpile, okay. That doesn't really help us too much, so. Salute the man of the nation. Of course, we cannot proceed with the reform in the hell if we do not address the most basic of issues. Whom do we salute? In the later war, years of the war, as the SS gained power and influence Hitler, the Nazi salute was made mandatory for all enlisted personnel. Even the oldest, most curmudgeonly veteran of the Great War was forced to raise his trembling arm high in praise of an ideology he has destroyed he all fought for. The question is, can we permit this to continue? Despite having placed his trust in us, the fear watches our every move closely, no less wary than his predecessor of an independently minded army. Continuing the current state salute as a small concession might ease his fears, but at the same time, it's symbolic of the party's subjugation in the hip. Can we allow such an injustice to endure? endure? Maybe. 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 Um, We don't really need to do either one of these, so... Okay. And civilian investment, yes, please. Infrastructure investment, yes. We still have more than enough money. We can invest in the military stuff, but that costs us money, and I don't want to do that one. Anything up here? 11 and 10. God dang it. Mm, doesn't feel good. But, you know what does feel good? Getting rid of slavery. Depending on your opinion of slavery. Way too many slaves up here. Do this one. We're going to get rid of this group first. I'd love to dismantle this one and this one. Uh, 0.39. Da, 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 da. There you go. Mm, that's way too many slaves. IG, I don't know if we'll actually be able to get rid of IG5 and we'll see. Uh, one million slaves is a bit too many for that one. So, we'll see. No more party guidance. The heaviest shackle placed upon the hail is the National Socialist Leadership Officer Corps. Modeled on the Bolshevik commissars of all things, these snakes are led by soldiers who have sold their souls to Nazism and answered directly to the party. In theory, they are supposed to act as Nazi-friendly secular chaplains to ensure the good spirits and loyalty of the soldiery in practice. Their role is to mete out punishment, usually the capital kind, to anyone who questions orders or retreats without permission. These leeches are a plague that we cannot tolerate any longer. Military discipline is important, but morale and good conduct cannot be maintained through murder. Capital punishment should be reserved for war crimes and traitors. Not men whose courage failed them, or who were too free of spirit. They will not compromise on this. The fear will abolish this vile institution, and our service will come to its end. Or our service will come to its end. <sighs> I don't want this political power. Heil whom? As a hail is slowly but steadily reformed, and taken from the clutches of corrupted, self-serving officers, as a debate fills the barracks in the command rooms, with the fear of granting a larger autonomy to the Obercommando de Hale, and slowly depoliticizing the armed forces as suggested by Von Trosco. Or Trusco. Some officers ask themselves whether there's still any reason to swear their loyalty to the person of the leader rather uh, the, rather than the nation as a whole. In the glory days of the Reich, the screams of how Hitler were so loud they shook the earth and made buildings tremble, but where did, they, where did this bring us? When the officers of the Wehrmacht started siding with this or that pretender, swearing their loyalty to the front runner, they caused a bloody civil war that caused untold amounts of victims. Now some reformist officers wish to fully detach the army from the party even more so than what the new leader desires, and the first step would be to replace the oath of loyalty to the Fuhrer with a more neutral oath to the nation and institutions. While these officers aren't showing any sign of disloyalty and will accept any decision on the matter, it's evident that this will have repercussions on the larger political debate. Already the reformists within the Reichstag call for a comprehensive reform to remove any political influence in the army while the conservatives are trying to stop what they call the dangerous push towards anarchy. As the government is called to decide on the matter, what will the Fuhrer do? Who should the new soldiers wear their loyalty to? Speer. Absolutely to spare. 
And how are we doing here? We have room for growth, but not much. Don't forget. And that's good too. And right there too. Sehr good. We're pretty much quite literally ma almost maximized on civvies right now. Anything else here? Seven and two. We need three. Three max. Three max. Zero to one. Well, is there anything for two here? Three to four? Um. Mm, I don't really want to risk it. Two to three. Oh, we can't. We can't risk this one. Oh boy, that's not good. Um. Let's look in, I'll wait. All right then. I'll clean them up. Oh, Field Marshal Von Tresco has once said to the men of the OKW, We must take care, my friends, of how our actions will shape our memory. How will history remember us if not even a handful of German soldiers have the courage to cease their criminality? If we don't change our ways, the guilt will not fall solely on Bormann, Hedrich, Goring, and the comrades, but on you and me, your wives and mine, your children and mine, and the people of Germany and all of the generations to come. We must accept our failings. The Hale's crimes aren't entirely our fault, but they are our responsibility. Perhaps history will never exonerate us. Perhaps our esteemed fear will write the... Uh, history books, and conceal the truth of Germany's fall into darkness. But we can claim one victory. It will forever be a fact that we took a stand against Nazism and begin to write the courses that our nation was set upon nearly 40 years ago. Now we can only pray that our decisions are never forgotten by those who succeed us. Hopefully. Oh boy. Now, the, in 100 years, we'll probably say we're all Nazis and they're all bad people. Let's be real here. Uh, 1 to 3. Ooh, 1 to 3. Yes. Let's do that one. Oh, we heard a command part. God dang it. Uh -uh. It's alright, whatever. Uh, accent is almost done. Synthetic oil. Yes, please. Because it is mid-68, so... And a truly national army. Hitler would be terrified if he could see what we have wrought. The Hale wrestled away from the clumsy, clammy grasp of his dying political institution. We have shrugged off the chains of ideology. can finally stand proud as servants, not of a dictator, but of the entire Reich. Henceforth, we shall once again be the protectors of Germany. Sword and shield to be wielded by the nation rather than by its leader. In the Great War, we were led to ruin by the mistakes of our leaders. In the Second War, our defeat was only delayed. To prevent total destruction, we must never again allow ourselves to be controlled by a single man. Out of the Wehrmacht below division limit. Okay, pretty good. We lose even more political power. Why? But we get even more political power. That's not bad. That's really bad. All this stuff here. Oh my gosh. A truly national army. Jesus. But we, hey, we got enough PP. I'm feeling good about that. Seven. And nothing down there. Cool. Why must the game pay me 60 billion in deficit? Jesus Christ. Save our souls. Oh my gosh. But look seaward. The Kriegsmarine, the most neglected branch of the Wehrmacht by far, they have changed little since the Second World War. Their doctrine is still heavily focused on subs, backed up with a decent sized surface fleet. It was enough to carry us against the British, but we could never or would have never stood a chance against the US Navy. Right now, the Kriegsmarine is impressive only in appearances. It is severely, severely outclassed by our rivals and needs much heavy investment to be useful again. How much, though? We could assume a global role, as the cabinet recommends, or we could assume a defensive stance to protect what we have left in Europe. Alright, stability is looking 100%. We're at 9. Yes, yes. I think we could be able to win this one. This one's still okay. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Boom. Alright, let's read the next one. Global responsibilities, yes. Uh, sweeping changes. Fleet heavy hegemony. I like to get more political power. But this is more conservative, so... Global responsibilities. The fear is the idea of a Kriegsmarine acting in purely defensive role has some merit, but it is mistaken. Events of the past two decades have shown that the Reich cannot remain both isolated from the world and a superpower. We have the technology to surpass the megalomania of Hitler and the conservatism of the party. Aircraft carriers, destroyers, missile cruisers, these are the things we need, not aging battleships and obsolete U-boats. To be a global player, we must accept the responsibility that comes with that status. Ironically, our ability to project power around the globe may help us save the face in the eyes of our old enemies, sailing through stormy nights. Ever since the First World War, um, the Kriegsmarine has been the smallest of the three components of the Hale, and the smallest navy among the world superpowers. With the Reich focusing its doctrines on trade interdiction as the war became longer than expected, large and expensive, expensive capital ships such as Bismarck were kept anchored, and the seas became the hunting ground for the rabbit packs of nimble mass-produced U-boats. The British and American economies were crippled, paving the way for the Axis to win in the long run, and for Admiral Dönitz to cement his position at the Navy's helm. <clears throat> And during the following years of relative peace, the Kriegsmarine was mostly left to rot, and most of the Navy funds were slowly stepping towards a hair. The West Russian War saw spelled even more cuts for the Navy as the generals took more and more funds for the Pat projects and defeat the bloated monster that was now the army. When the Civil War broke out, the Kriegsmarine sided with Bowman, but Dönitz decided to retreat to Crimea, realizing that no matter his allegiance, there was no way the Navy could do anything except getting either sunk or scuttled. Despite surviving the war almost untouched, however, the Kriegsmarine is in a dire state. Years of neglect have left the Navy small and obsolete, with most ships dating back to the last war. As things are, a total overhaul is needed in both doctrine and equipment, to bring it back from the dead and turn it into a modern fleet. Despite the resistance of admirals formerly close to Dunitz, while Jusko knows an, a new and powerful Kriegsmarine is necessary if Germany is to return to its forefront of military innovation. Raise a flag, we sail towards the future. Now, 
All justice here. Um, we lost. But up off screen, I'm probably going to replay this stuff. So make sure, or at least attempt again for me and for us. So we get up to 10, because that really sucks. We should have been able to get this one, honestly. But I think I'll try it again and get them, get Serbia with us. I think that'll be good to do. So I'll probably do that off screen. <clears throat> See, snakes. Yes. Admiral uh, Karl Dönitz, a liar, traitor, and a cad. The Kriegsmarines are conservative. Dönitz is a bomb and loyal to the core. He claims loyalty to the Reich above all, but how can we possibly believe that? He acted without authorization in a seizure of the Crimea and refused to support our legitimate government during the Belga Krieg. This old toady of Hitler's has escaped his reckoning for far too long. His political opposition to our regime is intolerable, given his position as Grand Admiral. Dönitz is heavily re entrenched in the conservative camp, so prosecuting him will not pass without consequence. The question is, should we simply try to have him dishonorably discharged or try to enact a more severely punishment Fitting his treason. If you like your brothers, please go ahead. A toast to economists. Yes. Yes. A thousand times yes, my friends. Yeah, it's unfortunate that we couldn't get the last one. Um, honestly, with all this stuff here, we're, I mean, roads are really good. Um, we're b basically building an autobahn across all of Europe right now. I guess we could cut down on civilian construction spending, but that, that requires PP. So, yeah. Um, uh, boom, boom. Palace bug. Oh boy. I'll uh, go right there too. Oh yeah, it's actually looking really good. Oh, this part of Poland too. After that, um, honestly, I'm not really sure what to do. Build a lot of radar, I guess. Yeah, build a lot of radar down here too. We're going to need a lot of that and then build a lot of air bases too. There you go. Look at all these air, air bases. So much for, you know, cutting down on military spending. Huh. Um, we only have 24 command power and we're done with the research. This is all done, which is really nice actually. It is 68, August 1st. Alright, and I'm, I'm still glad we don't have to deal with the resistance or regime stability anymore. That's so much nicer. A few doctor tapes. Canada, Montreal, Quebec. We've been successful in our attempt to drive wedges between Canada and America for a while. We've been working to gather pop tapes and recordings in which American officials, politicians, or public figures derive the people of Canada or the government. These are not incredibly difficult to find, as Canada and the U.S. have something of a friendly rivalry already. In addition to these recordings, however, we will make our own recordings in a more hostile tone. These include things such as bitter, biting criticism of Canada or phony American plans to annex a state. God, I wish we could do that. By including these tapes along with other tapes, whose authenticity can be easily verified, we can trust that the Canadians will believe our own additions as well. We've delivered these tapes anonymously, of course, to severe, several Canadian news outlets. The response amongst the Canadian people, predictably, has been one of outrage at the American hubris and disrespect of their allies within the OFM. While this may not drive the Canadians from the organization, we expect that they will be much less cooperative in the future. Yanks make for poor friends, it seems. Definitely can be. Um, who's next? Operation Zima? Nederlande. It's been confirmed the Black State of Europe has been spread its nasty tendrils to the USA. That advertisement agency in Madison Square Park was merely the beginning. Those Burgundian agents seem to have gotten their funding somewhere from within the U.S. financial sector to prevent them from doing anything further. The R&D will immediately begin a deeper and more thorough investigation. Segut. And I guess Sigheil? Do we say that here anymore? I guess not. That's disappointing. The AI cheated. They cheated. The seas are safe. The recruit... The Reich cannot be everywhere at once. If the Kriegsmarine is out on the high seas, that means the European coast of the Reich and the Einheitspact are lightly defended. This is no trifling concern, as a generally weak militaries would be unable to stave off an invasion from the Mediterranean. Enemy subs too could rain the packs shipping lanes or raid the shipping lanes with impunity. At least that's what the opponents of our naval reforms say, bleeding old Bormanites for the most part. They insist that every kilometer of coastline without half a darn battle fleet assigned to it is a target for the OFM, that extending our reach into the oceans will leave us vulnerable. This is only true if they view the world through a hostile lens. Yes, non packed fleets in Europe might be concerning, but literally, and Iberia desire war with us no more than we do with them, and Burgundy's fleet is too small to be a threat. The entirety of the Einheit's Pact must be actively ensured that they are safe under our banner, and the Foreign officer Office will work with the Kriegsmarine to spread this message. We're going to keep spending. We don't oh, with Pari, we have 10 billion less in deficit. And our GDP growth went down. Oh, God. The Trial of Nuremberg. The city of Nuremberg was chosen as a site for the trial of the surviving disloyal officers who had committed tr crimes against the nation in their service to the traitors and secessionists. Chief among them was the traitors Admiral Karl Dönitz, who had fled from Germany with the majority of the Kriegsmarine to find refuge in Crimea. After the end of the war, the Admiral surrendered himself when threatened with retaliation from the new government in Germania. His hopes of keeping his rank were shattered a few months later, when he was formally accused of treason and dereliction of duty, and tried together with several SS members and generals who followed either Goring or Bormann. When the day of the victory came, Dönitz stood with other defendants in the courtroom. The judges entered the room one by one and read the final sentence. The admiral didn't listen to what had been decided for the others, though the amount of screams and cries told him that the convictions were far more than acquitt acquittals. Finally, it was his turn, and it took all he had to not join the rest of the accused in their screams. The court declares called Dönitz, chief, of the ad chief admiral of the Kriegsmarine. 
culprit of treason and dereliction of duty, and for this he is sentenced to be stripped of all his ranks and decorations and to thirty years of detention. As the guards stripped him of the signs of his ranks, he didn't protest, and when they brought him away in handcuffs, he didn't even try to resist. He simply followed, his head low, shame radiating from him like the stench of treason he emanated. The master of the wolf pack is no more. Hey, that's not too bad. That's actually really good. God, I want to get rid of this one badly. And this one, too. One million slaves. Um, I want to get rid of Dalma Benz as fast as possible. Let's do that one first. We got him. And the focus bio has been taken. Oh, we take the focus. Okay, that's good. Alright, that's actually not too bad. Um, over here... Uh, let's do this one first. We have enough PP to do it. I might just do more PP earlier. I might... Like I said earlier, I might have to replay this a little bit. Uh, 204, 240. Yeah, that sucks. Anything else down here? No, no, no. Anything here? No, no, no. Anything down here? Yes? Well, not really, no. But really, no. <laughs> um, the new Hoxie Flota. There are f oh, actually, you know what? Well, since we got that one done, the past is the past. Buyout. Yeah, it's buyout. With the fat trim and unsavory executives lined up for prosecution, Dalma Benz is vulnerable. Now is the time to go in hard and fast. We'll aggressively buy up every single asset they have left, forcibly if we must. In a week, the once mighty cartel will be just another state owned industrial corporation operative at a beck and call. With that done, we can also move on to business of dealing with that corrupt evil snake flick. He ranks alongside Obbs in terms of his lives, he's destroyed in the name of profit, and he's co coiled himself around a fortune that belongs to someone more deserving. Perhaps if we're lucky, someone might else might get to him first and give him what he deserves. Perhaps not, in all due time, you rat duderino. Yeah, this is actually. Yeah, it feels like we're an, on a, an accelerated path towards getting all this stuff done, so it's actually kind of nice. This still pains me, though. Oh, God, it pains me so much. But, past is past. With the assets seized or privatized and the corporation itself brought to heel, Reichsweg has been dealt a blow with which it will never recover. We put a pay to Gallenberg's greed and ambition, liberating his wealth for the nation and ending the brutal practice of industrial slavery in his mines and factories. From here on out, it's only a matter of time until Reichsweg is little more than a footnote in history. A department of the Reich government managed in a nationalized industry soon. The name will be all that remains, and even that will change in time. Gallenberg bloody empire will die with him as it should have long ago. The Reich's needs. I'd love to do that one, but... Oh, we can do this stuff too. Yay, we're coming back here. Yay, 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 yay. That's good stuff, man. That is some good stuff. Media manipulation? The media is always manipulating things. Good or bad. One side or another side. It does not matter. Always manipulating. Uh, firm chain. Like this one. Um, uh, The conservatives will greatly benefit from this. Uh, guiding ham. No matter how much we invest, Eastern Europeans will never trust us if we insist on holding their hand through the process of economic regeneration. True equality is a long way off, but we must work to represent ourselves as a partner rather than a master. Germany will always be Europe's largest economy, but having them the same amount of clout of legal terms will help foster trust with their new friends. Rather than maintaining German control of resources and heavy industry in the East, we should place these in the hands of reliable locals whenever possible. Allowing for a strong degree of autonomy will give them the experience needed to become self-reliant, and will demonstrate our good intentions. No amount of whitewashing our economic dominance will give us that. Hey, look at that. Yes. All this stuff is good. Civilian stuff. Infrastructure. Yes, yes, yes. And I'll go back to Serbia. Oh. Oh, look at that. Regime alignment has a somewhat reformist and overwhelmingly reformist outlook. Now that's finally good. I can finally say that I'm feeling pretty good about this. It's feeling not too bad. Oh, disappear reactionaries? Oh. Oh, uh, no. Oh, uh, national socialism is less than 10%. Oh, we can't take that one anymore. That kind of sucks, actually. Wow. I, I can finally say that we're, I feel like we're doing we're doing quite well. I feel like we're being successful. Then again, we, I don't feel too often. We shouldn't feel too often. A propaganda? No, 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 no. We have a lot of people right now. Even though I've heard when the slave revolt actually do, does hit normally, like we're not gonna have any PP left. So there you go. Cool. And guiding hand. Yes. Regime's a bit to go down, but that's okay. More GDP growth is great. Uh, Führer, Führer Erlass. Erlass. Cool. The past is the past, and we're here again. Um, Reichsvaka. Oh, can we dismantle them? Dismantled. Good. Sehr good. Alright, so I was just looking. There are no slaves here. Oh, we can't do this one now? That's weird. That barely. Dalma Ben's dismantled. This is impossible! There must be another way! 
Everyone in the Reichswehr, uh, Reichswehrschaft's Mysterium could hear the loud voice coming from the Reichsminister Ludwig Erhard's, Erhard's office, and everyone knew who it belonged to. Friedrich Slick was a powerful man and very much used to meeting important ministerial officers to ensure that as many com companies will get the way wanted, be it a tender, a tax discount, or an exclusive deal in a conquered region's manpower. There'll be no other way, and I didn't call you here to negotiate. Dalma Benz shall be dismantled and its member companies restored as independent actors in a free market. Erhard's voice was calm but final. He prepared for this moment, and now he wouldn't let anything get in his way. Reich Minister, I'm sure there is an another way. There's always another way. Flick's voice changed tone, becoming mellifluous and almost sickeningly sweet. I'm sure you're a man of refined tastes. Perhaps we could find an accommodation, a deal between fellow businessmen? Ehad smiled. He knew the sniveling dude would have tried to bribe him. He always had tried this way before and expected him to be the same as all the others who preceded him behind the desk. Oh, I'm sure we can find a deal, he said, smiling, but Flick's predatory smile was cut short by the sound of recorder playing. Reich's minister, I'm sure there's another way. There's always another way. I'm sure you're a man of refined taste. Perhaps we can find an accommodation, a deal between fellow businessmen. The corroded voice of the entrepreneur was crystal clear, and its owner recoiled as if by a mistake. By a snake. If bit by a snake. He wouldn't dare. Here's my deal. You'll get off from my office right now and don't oppose the dismantlement. In exchange for my magnanimous self, won't have you sentenced to a labor camp for trying to bribe a minister of the Reich. Five minutes later, Ludwig Erhau was still laughing in his empty office. Look how at how he ran! Ha! Huh. Very good. Success, success, success. I'd love to do that one again, but whatever. A guiding hand. Europe's dreams. The Zolverine has the foundation it needs to succeed now. It is time for Germany to loosen its grip and take a step back. If this is to be truly a pan-European project, member states must have the ability to make their own mark on it. Maintaining its original, purely German nature will harm international relations in the long term, which sits ill with both my conscience and my good senses. Many of the rights and privileges granted to our junior partners will be relatively insignificant in nature, of course. There are many burdens that come with economic freedom, but and we only are in a position to bear them at this time. It'll be difficult for people, but as they prosper, to see more control to the rest of the Zollverein in the future. But I have faith that our institutions will make it happen. Anything here? Nope. Anything here? Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. 51 billion, 14.6 billion, formation of the stock intern, so be it. A Nadlehor report. Burgundian ties into the U.S. financial sector have been successfully researched. It seems like their source of funding is from shell companies masquerading as civilian businesses. State of profits is by a large margin expected operation to continue for an un undefined but lengthy period of time, if nothing else is to be done. With this data, we can extrapolate the following facts. Oldenshaw Bergen is making a significant amount of wealth via siphoning money from the foreign countries, using their agents to infiltrate the fake identification, and pose as wealthy American businessmen, expected to happen similarly in countries that have developed the civilian industry, Japan, Canada, etc. Advised research into the Black Sea itself. End of page. Getting filthy rich, but... What for? This is so much pee-pee. Anything here? Anything in Africa? Anything in Russia? Uh, what's your name in West Russia? Um, their G our GDP growth, wait, our GDP growth will decrease. Zero percent chance of failing. Um, oh, their GDP growth will decrease. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. What can you do about Australia? What's your name at Nevin Kitson? Australia and America are allies of convenience and nothing more. If Australia had not been connected to Britain, it is unlikely America would have given them a second thought to further divide the members of the wealth fam. We need to remind Australia of this. To further add insult to injury, we could forge documents showing that America views Japan Australia, as a vital concession to the Japanese, were that it to come. The truth of this, of course, is debatable, but we would certainly not put it past them. Very good. And, let's see, anything else here? Not too much, not too much. So good. We can't take this one yet, because we need this one, which is going to take quite a bit more time, but that's okay. Pop-up attacks are very nice. Very, very good. It's all looking not too bad, honestly. But early, I mean, we, I struggled so much. You, you know how much I struggled. If you're still watching, thank you for watching it, by the way. Um, but you saw how much I struggled with this campaign. But let's go do the new Hoxie Flota. There are a few positive members of Kaiser Wilhelm II in our nation today, but he had his virtues. Among them was his dedication to giving the Reich of his day a navy worth its status. Though it cannot be denied that his personal ambition was a driving force behind his decision, the end goal was noble. Germany needed a fleet to defend herself against the overbearing British, French, and Russians. It was only fair that we were able to defend ourselves from seaborne threats. Von Trusko has convinced the Fuhrer that a return to the Kaiser's ideas is not, in fact, a Prussian ploy, but a strategically sound decision. Building ships that can effectively operate half a world away will not be easy, but is necessary. Carriers and missile cruisers will be the core of this new Hoxie Flotta, and will have a strong cadre of technologically sophisticated destroyers to protect them from the submerged and airborne threats. 
Oh, there's this one. Oh, that's yes. And sticking, instead of sticking to our own waters, our navy must grow accustomed to living, working, and if necessary, fighting on the high seas. Conditions in European waters are much calmer and generally easier to operate in. It is likely that the Kriegsmarine is seriously out of practice when it comes to oceanic progress and operations. To remedy this, the Kriegsmarine will be ordered to start holding training exercises in a greater variety of locations. They have focused too heavily on growing on European operations in recent decades, growing complacent and conservative. A modern navy must be ready to fight in any theater of war, be it calm, deep azure of the Baltic, or the rolling or roiling a maelstrom of the Atlantic in winter. If Americans and Japanese can do it, so can we. And we'll do the sea beckons. The Kriegsmarine has not been advertised correctly for some time now, if it was ever advertised to the populace at all. At some point, it was apparently decided that a life on the sea wasn't glorious enough for the true Germans, and virtually all recruitment efforts became geared to the hair. Apart from being a reckless abandonment of our naval duties, that decision was supremely foolish. Who doesn't love the ocean? The gentle caressing of the waves, the cool embrace of the salt and spray, the excitement of operating one of the most technologically advanced warships in the world in such glories. That's what a veteran sailor should say. At least. Juan Tresco, a landlubber at heart, is content to agree with the sentiment and endorse a thorough recruitment drive, focusing on adventure and opportunity. And we'll read this one and I'll end the episode here. Germania rules the waves. The question of the Kriegsmarine was never going to be easily answered. Regardless of our chosen path, the topic was always going to be controversial. The Kriegsmarine is the primary representative of the Wehrmacht outside of Europe's borders, so the manner of its representation or presentation is crucial for the shipping our image on the world stage. The question is now solved, however, and there's no pleasing some people. Those who oppose the Führer's final decision will just have to accept it, in one capacity or another. Germany rules the waves once again. For those who know themselves to be in the right, that's enough. Think, mein Führer, Erhard stated, turning his head away to blow smoke through the window. Consider the consequences of forcing the Zolveran to remain dominant of the Reich. If we do that, all we're setting ourselves up is for is a future failure of our sphere. His words stung cruelly, and Speer relented on, uttering a swear before turning to look at Helmut Schmidt. And you, Speer asked, voice tightened somewhat. Schmidt nodded politely, then showed a hand towards Erhard. That's he's right, mein Führer. If we decide not to liberalize the Zolfrein, then we'd be running the risk of eventually turning the members against us. Just look at Japan and its fear as an example. The tensions between the members and Japan are palpable. Was Speer really hearing this? Now two out of the four members of the gang were nearly just directly coercing him into following through with their demands. And if he decided to raise a voice, protest, then the only obvious thing would have followed. Letting the air in the room stay thin for a few seconds more, he finally decided to speak. Eh, he stated, turning his gaze to the men. Let's say we do liberalize the Zolverein. In the future, what's to stop them from dreaming about detaching themselves from the Reich? To pursue a lighter light at the end of the tunnel, after all. If we're so benevolent now, then the implication would be that we can continue this benevolence for the future, and this would not bode well for the Reich. Erhard's eyes narrowed, and his teeth grazed against the skin of his cigar just a bit tighter. Taking a bite, taking it out of his mouth, he sighed. My fear, you have it backwards. I understand that you hold a more traditional position on things, but that doesn't mean that everyone isn't German. Uh, is unreasonable, but for exactly the reason you initially described is why we, they would not leave us. Speer leaned back, stare softening only slightly. After all, what do they gain out of leaving a mutually beneficial partnership? Pride? Erhard shook his head. They already lost that while ago. They would only have to gain by staying and nothing by losing. This, he paused, taking a pop of cigar, would only happen if he let this reform pass. An air of silence passed between them for many seconds. Both men in the room, uh, both men in front of the Fuhrer, wondered what he had planned on staying. Before he pushed his chair back up and stood up, the expression of his face spoke a thousand words. Herr Erhard, Herr Schmidt, you are both dismissed. I will be busy. The payments to the Zolbrand's budget will increase by 5%, while Germany's budget payout decreases by 10%. That sucks, but I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we expand or getting rid of slavery and improving the conditions for all of Germania. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.